Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. Kaushal this side and I hope you guys are doing well. Today, we'll be taking you through CSS units. In this video tutorial, we'll understand what CSS units are and when you should use which unit and the different types of units which we use to make changes on a web page. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have regular updates on multiple programming videos. So if you are a programmer and if you want to learn something new, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Code. So without any further delay, let's get started with CSS units. Before we move on to the programming part, let's understand what CSS units are. CSS units are the measurements used in cascading style sheet or CSS to specify the size, position and other properties of HTML elements. CSS units are essential in determining the layout and appearance of web pages. There are different types of CSS units, each with their own use cases and application. Generally, CSS units are divided into two different types. Absolute CSS units or we can say absolute length CSS units and relative length units or we can say relative units. So let's understand what absolute and relative units are. Absolute units are fixed and a length expressed in any of these will appear as exactly that size. For example, centimeter is an absolute unit. One centimeter is equal to one centimeter always. Inches is also an absolute unit. Then we have other absolute units like millimeters, pixels and points and picas and a lot of absolute units we have. Relative unit or we can say relative length units on the other hand specify a length relative to another length property. For example, we have two boxes. One box is present within the second box. So in relative unit, we can relate to the length of these two boxes. If we are using relative units with for the box which is present inside, then it will take units, uh, relative units from the parent box which is present outside. So relative length unit scales better between different rendering mediums. So there are a different or we can say many types of relative units as well like M, REM, viewport width, viewport height, vmin, vmax, percentage and a lot of other units. So the most commonly used CSS units are pixels, percentage, m's and rems. Pixels are absolute units and are used to specify a fixed size for elements. Percentage units on the other hand are relative to the size of their parent element allowing for scalable and responsive designs. M's and rems are units based on the font size with M's being relative to the font size of the parent element and rems being relative to the font size of the root element. Viewport units are another type of CSS units that is becoming more popular these days. So these units are based on the size of viewport. So the viewport is basically the visible area of the web page. For example, here this is the visible area of a web page. So this is the viewport. So let's go through the example of each of these units. We are going to discuss about four or five different types of units. So let's go through the programming part of each unit. Fine. We'll start with what we can say pixels. Let's start with pixels. So pixels is the unit, right? For example, width as 500 pixels, set the width of an element to 500 pixels. So basically one pixel is equal to um, one by 96th part of an inch. So if you know like one inch is always equals to 2.50 or something like that 2.55 centimeters. So basically one pixel is one by 96th part of one inch. So if I want to show you guys, I'll just write over here. Okay, let's write it like this. We can use these comments anywhere in a program. So let's put them here and I'll write over here. One pixel is equal to one by 96th part of an inch. Fine, of one inch. So you guys know how small a pixel is. Fine. So let me just 
guys please make a note of it one pixel is equal to 1 by 96 part of an inch let's understand this with an example now what I'll do is I'll create a div tag I'll use the ID attribute let's say we have the ID as pixel and just leave it over here now we are going to access this particular div tag with the help of ID which is hash pixel and I'll write over here inside this what I can write so we have to go through the example of pixel so we'll write over here width we are going to define the width okay I'll write width over here as any width you can take let's say for example I'm taking 200 pixel right now height height is let's say 150 pixels I'm mentioning over here and change the background color we are not going to do anything different just right here aqua save it and here you can see we have a box which has a width of 200 pixels and a height of 150 pixels the background color is aqua so you can see the box right if I increase the size of browser you can see there is no change so they are not responsive pixels are not responsive fine the next one we are going to def discuss is percentage percentage is a relative unit so percentage depends on the parent element so for example if I take another div tag over here with ID as let's say percent close this div tag as well now what I'm going to do is I'm going to style it over here so the same thing I'm going to write hash percent I'm accessing that particular div tag with ID as percent width I have to define then height I have to define so what I'll do is I'll write height and width in percentage now for example if I'm writing 50% over here it means 50% of 200 pixels because this div tag is the parent element similarly if for height if I write 50% and let's change the background color fine you guys will see a clear difference okay any background color of your choice let's use blue over here this time save it and here you can see we have a box which has a width of 100 pixels and the height of 75 pixels if you want to see the change over here make it 75 75 for both and this will reach somewhere over here because I guess this is the 75 percent of the total width save it and here you can see this is 75 percent of the width of a parent element so this is how the percentage works now next up we have M empirical M and whatever you want to say so M is basically used for font size font size as 1.2 M will set the font size of an element to 1.2 times of the font size of its parent element I'll give a clear example fine write something inside this box this is an example of rem okay M fine this is another example of M fine save it here you can see we have two texts let me just change the background color to white to make you guys understand it much better so here you can see okay white is a little off so I'll use beach so here you can see we have two different paragraphs right this one is says this is an example of M and this one says this is another example of M now define the font size over here font size let's say I'm saying is how we can use 12 pixels fine so you can see the font size of this particular thing is 12 pixels now now I'll use font size here again but this time I'm going to write here 1.5 rem or we can say m because we are using m now save it you will see that this size is bigger than this size because the size of this particular text is going to be 12 pixels into 1.5 12 into 1.5 is going to be somewhere around 18 fine so if I write here 18 pixels and save it you can see there's no change right it's equals to 18 pixels because we have used 1.5 rem over here similarly for making it smaller we can use 0.5 m save it now this is half of this particular text 
the size of this text is half of this text right which is six pixels fine you guys i hope you guys must have got a, an idea about how to use this unit m fine the next one we have is rem so rem will set the font size of an element to 1.2 times of the font size of the root element fine let me just give you an example of rem as well so if i write here okay just remove these two first save it remove this one as well and save it now we'll write over here html and just define the font size okay i have to write here font size as 16 pixels save it okay font size is 18 pixels save it you can see or just use it at 10 pixels okay so yeah now the font size is 10 pixels so what i'll do inside here is i'll write font size as 1.2 rem fine let's see if it changes or not save it and here you can see the font size is now 1.2 rem similarly i'll write over here inside this one font size is 2 rem fine save it and here you can see it took the size of a root element which means html2 rem the size of this is now 20 pixels fine so this is the difference between m and rem m takes the size of parent element and rem takes the size of root element now the next one we have is the viewport units so the viewport units viewport as i have already mentioned depends on the size of a browser here you can see the size is smaller right so viewport will depend on the size of this particular browser the size of this particular browser so if i write if i show you an example of what we can say viewport what i'll do is i'll just remove everything from here so that it will be easy for you guys to understand and we'll write the whole code again for viewport i guess you have made a note of this so i'll remove this as well now i'll take a div tag so I'll write div over here, just a div tag, just an empty div tag will work because this time we are going to use the element name as a selector. Fine, so I'll write over here width as 50 viewport width, VW represents viewport width. Height as 50 viewport, okay, viewport height, background color we have to set as yellow fine now the moment i'll save it what will happen is the width will be 50 percent of this particular width from here from this corner to this corner and the height is going to be 50 percent of this viewport height fine save it and here you can see height is 50 percent width is also 50 percent width is quite visible height is also visible if you guys remove this part and here you can see 50 50 right so the good part about viewport width and viewport height is if I increase the size of this window, you can see the width and height changes. The height is now, the height is basically the same because we have reduced the width and you can see the change in width, right? It's exactly 50% of this, what we can say total viewport, right? Means total viewport area, fine. So this is how we can use the viewport unit. So we have other units as well, but these are the most commonly used units. So viewport units and pixels, percentage, m's and rems, we are going to use them again and again. One more we can see is centimeter. Just right here, not 50 centimeter, 10 centimeter, we'll write over here. For width and for height again, we are going to write here 10 centimeter because this is the absolute length centimeter is in absolute length so if i write here 10 centimeter take a scale and measure the length it's going to be 10 centimeter i'll have to show it like this 10 centimeter and 10 centimeter so this is how we can use centimeters now which one should you use so basically guys it's important to understand the difference between the different css units as well as their pros and cons in order to effectively use them in web design as we mentioned viewport width and viewport height are always responsive to the web page so 
by this we can say that it's important to understand the difference between different CSS units. So CSS units can greatly affect the look and feel of a website. We just saw an example of this and choosing the right unit can make a big difference in the end result. So it's up to you guys which unit you are using. Just know why you are using that unit. So with that, we have come to the end of this CSS units tutorial. I hope you guys must have got a good idea about what CSS units are. And if you still have any doubts related to any of the topics we have covered in this particular video, then please feel free to drop them down in the comment section and I'll definitely answer them for you. So thank you so much for being here guys. If you enjoyed watching this video, then do give it a thumbs up. Comment your doubts below. Please share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe Simply Code. Thank you.